Actor Chris Pratt is ripping critics who give him a bad grade for his new Amazon Prime show, The Terminal List. Watch this. Oh, tell me what happened. Somebody fed us bad intel. It's a setup. If I'm right, we need to act on this. I need names. If there's a connection to you and your men, I'll find it. Answers or blood? Blood. Where's James Reese? Is it true your fugitive is a Navy SEAL? There's a bunch of people tracking you right now, so just lay low. Joining us right now is the Navy SEAL who inspired the series and author of The Terminal List, Jack Carr, who's joining us from a beautiful beach in Westport, Connecticut. Hey, Jack. <laughs> close, you're close. Uh, writing my sixth novel out here, and it was an undisclosed location, but uh, I think some of your viewers will be able to, to, to recognize that coastline behind me there. Okay, well, we did put a locator up in the corner. We apologize. We're going to take that out. Hey, um, I, I mentioned at the beginning, Jack, that the critics seem to really be tearing into it. The, the Daily Beast wrote, Chris Pratt's The Terminalist is an unhinged right-wing revenge fantasy, but yeah, my wife and I started watching it last week, and it it didn't seem like uh, it, there was any political bent to it. There's not. We don't mention right, left, conservative, liberal. None of those things are even mentioned. Uh, and I think just the uh, Daily Beast in particular, their review was uh, was quite uh, quite mean. But uh, they see an American flag and they get upset, or they see someone who is competent with weapons uh, has this certain mindset and holds those in power uh, accountable for their actions. And they just kind of lose it a little bit. So the critics, yeah, they're not big fans of this, but the audience score uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, 94, 95%. And it's the uh, the number two streaming show uh, across all of television right now. Just beat by Stranger Things, but it's hard to compete with Stranger Things. Uh, <laughs> one point six billion minutes of, uh, of viewing. Yeah. And uh, for those out there, math that's uh that's quite a few years so we really didn't make it for critics and what was important to me to chris pratt to antoine fuqua the director to david DeGilio, the showrunner was that we make something that would speak to those members of the military who went down range over the last 20 years so they could sit down they could watch this show and they could say wow these guys put in the work they made a show that speaks to me and that's what we did and that 95 percent score tells me that we got pretty close that, that's right as we look at some of it uh it, it is amazing how the the actual people uh who you cited on rotten tomatoes gave it such a better grade than the critics who's kind of poo-pooed it uh but but i i think part of it is chris pratt and you know it it's his appeal, but also at the same time, it's the appeal of the show. It's not a woke show, and people are hungry for stuff like that. Look at Yellowstone. They are, they are, and I think that you know, they're, like, there's no uh, woke or anti-woke, but just because there's not this woke stuff that's shoved into it, then it's perceived by critics, at least, as uh, not promoting their agenda. So they're going to hate it. And uh, it was interesting. A couple of those reviews they talked about, uh, they compared it to a "Don't Tread on Me" flag. And I thought that it was very interesting that they had to go back to the 1700s to take the side of the British in their reviews. And uh, more than one uh, cited the American flag in a negative way in their reviews. And also interesting to me is that the American flags in this show were mostly draped over coffins. Uh, so that was telling as well. Jack Carr joining us from an undisclosed location because he's got to get back to work. Thank you very much for joining us to talk a little bit about the Terminal List. Check it out. It's streaming right now on Amazon. Thank you, sir. Take care. All right.